All right, so this video is going to be part two of our parametric and polar review. In this video specifically, we will be doing an overview of polar. So polar is a, another way to kind of graph things, right? And what we have here is we have a point R comma theta, okay? That's our new points is R and theta. And we have R, right, which is our distance from the pole or origin to our point. And then we have theta, which is the angle between the polar axis, which is the positive x-axis. You can kind of think of it like that. It's the angle between the polar axis and the line that you create by connecting the origin and the point. Okay. Now we can also graph r as a function of theta. Okay. A popular graph you'll see is that r equals cosine of 2 theta. Okay, and how we graphed something like this was first viewing it as if R and theta were Cartesian coordinates. Okay, and we kind of picked our interval to where we picked our interval on theta to where theta would make a R, it would make R a max, zero, or a min. So we would have one up here, negative one down here. We would pick pi over. This would be pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and pi. And what you would do is you would start off here, down here, up, and then up again. Okay, and now you have something that's, it, it becomes a lot easier to graph this on your polar graph. Okay, you basically end up starting out here, and you go back to here, 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 around, and you get your little four leaf rows. Okay, that is the graph of r equals cosine of two theta. Now, you can extend this out to two pi if you want. I mean, you kind of understand the theme of what's happening, so, you know, you're fine. But yeah, basically that's how we were able to graph polar. Now, I recommend to try to perfect graphing as much as possible okay that's why i'm spending such a large amount of time on it because if you can graph polar okay it's going to help you so much also in calculus three but it's going to help you a lot for integrals and arc length you know so you're, you're going to be able to tell your bounds probably a lot easier now the next thing that we did was our calculus with polar okay we did our derivatives integrals arc length right now with derivatives, right, we know that the derivative of parametric equations, right, we know that dy dx with parametric equations is equal to dy over dt all over dx over dt. Okay, and we also know that x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, these are what we know about polar and these kind of start to look like parametric equations. So we might be able to connect this with this, all right? And what helps us connect is that we know r is a function of theta. So we can rewrite these two equations as x equals a function of theta times cosine of theta and y equals a function of theta times sine theta. Now these these are completely in terms of theta. So you can take the derivative and instead of having dy dt dx dt, you have dy d theta over dx d theta. Okay, that's gonna be your parameter. Okay, and that gives you your derivative formula. Okay, when you find dy d theta, right, you're taking the derivative here, you kind of see that you're using product rule. Okay, so you get, where is it here? Oh, on the back you get dr d theta times sine theta plus r cosine theta over dr d theta times cosine theta minus r sine theta. Okay, and that is how you find the derivative. Really, it's not too hard you just find your dr d theta here. Okay, so you, you'll have your r as a function of theta. You find dr d theta, and then you basically just plug everything in. You know, I mean, it's, it's not terrible. 
So for integrals, all we had was just an equation, okay? It wasn't, it wasn't super hard, just basically like substitution rule with uh, parametric equations. We had the integral from A to B of one half of R squared d theta. Okay, that's how we found the area. So pretty simple, right? We're not making too many manipulations to our R as a function of data, right? We're just squaring it and then putting it in this uh, integrand here. Okay, for arc length, we know that the arc length equation, we're, this is just plugging in what we know about polar into that parametric arc length equation. So we end up getting the square root of R squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. So that's pretty much all of it, right? We did, you know, what is polar, graphing polar, and then we did our calculus with polar, okay? I mean, with the, with the calculus, again, it's just really plugging things in, okay, and then doing calc one stuff. And for graphing, I mean, you kind of just need to wrap your head around this new coordinate system, r and theta. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. So if this video helped you, make sure to leave a like and subscribe by clicking my icon in the top left. You can also view the playlist for parametric and polar in the next video in the series. See you soon.